My name is Patricia Worth. I'm going to read to you from my translation, Stories to Read by Candlelight. It was originally Conte pour lire à la chandelle by Jean Lorrain. My translation was published last year by Odyssey Books. The original is from the 1890s. I'll read from uh, a story which I call Madame Gorgibus. It's about an old woman who is quite gorgeous, so I like turning Gorgibu into Gorgibus. Chapter 1 Three white cats with ribbons on their necks are dancing round the cauldron. The fine milk is boiling, and one of them, now and then, carefully dips his claw in. But, oh, the greedy thing! And he scampers back with three leaps, yowling. Three white cats with ribbons on their necks are dancing round a cauldron. The old raven, perched at the corner of the window, watches over them as in a dream, his eyes half closed. Hard to know if he sleeps or wakes, the crestless raven, almost a hundred years old, perched at the corner of the window in the shadow of the curtains. Perhaps he's dreaming of the great shimmering cypress and pine woods where in his youth he would fly swiftly, calling, crack, crack, crack. He and his sisters, my ladies the crows, deafening all the country round. The old raven might also be dreaming of the cooler sky of April when nests were built all through the tall budding trees and were filled with chattering chicks, and that was joy, abundance and love. Ah, why did the wretched woodcutter break his wing? A fine bit of mischief, a thrown stone, and now a sea of resentment swells the heart of the old bird. On the mantelpiece there is a Dresden china figurine, an ancient little shepherdess with pink painted cheeks who for two hundred years has mimed the same greeting. Oh, how bored she must be, my goodness. There's also a figure of Christ in blue faience from Camper and an hourglass that is never turned over. All these objects are velveted with dust. The Christ is the colour of ash and the little old Dresden piece, shrouded in spider webs, despairs. Oh, that frozen gesture of vainly shaking her crook and flounces. As for the hourglass, it has fallen asleep. Besides, everything in this house is so old that the objects don't seem to remember what to do. The old almanac hanging near the fireplace is dated at least 25 years ago. Some old etchings, which could be by Holbein, are fading away beneath their tarnished glass. The antique weight-driven clock in its waxed walnut case looks more like a sarcophagus. No tick-tocking nor mouse-trotting in the dusty neglect of this old house. The three white cats with ribbons on their necks are dancing round the cauldron, and the raven is devouring and ruminating his gall. Ah, yet when the wicked old fairy who lives in this lair comes back from her walk on the ramparts, it seems he would only have to muster courage and take one good leap. He would flutter about her face and stun her with pecks of his great beak. Then he would wait until the old hag had quite fainted so he could peel her eyeballs at his leisure. Oh, with the end of his old beak he would dig into her eye sockets and peck out her old eyes. And the old raven feels his feathers puff out. He runs, he flaps his wings, he swells and fills with a savage pleasure. Crack, crack, crack. Not with impunity did he have a few noble ancestors at the gibbet of Montfaucon. Noblesse oblige. But, click and frist, a key turns in the lock. Someone has come into the lane, and Madame Gorgibus, wrapped in her puce-ruched silk cape and capuche, enters the old dwelling. For her old raven, oh, how little she suspects the darkness of his soul. She brings a piece of calf lung and its smell disarms the shifty creature. Then she heads for the fireplace and crouches down in the ashes with all her cats climbing after her. You've had enough. Stop it, Blanchette. You'll get a beating. Baby face, if you want a clip on the ear. She tastes the milk, finds it just right, closes the inside shutter of the little window, puts my Lord Raven in his wicker cage and over it a piece of calico that will cast a shadow and put him to sleep. She lights her old green-shaded oil lamp, 
draws an old winged armchair close to the hearth and sits in it to take a nap before the evening supper. The three white cats purr on her stomach, stretched out in the lovely warmth. Master Raven is asleep, a captive in his darkened cage. Poor Madame Gorgibus, she won't be murdered yet. Not tonight. Here's an excellent silhouette by Erin Clare Barrow of Madame Gorgibus at the start of chapter two. Thank you for listening. Bye.